Thank you, ISC Trishur, for inviting me for Act 2021. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be speaking on spine chilling techniques in central neuraxial anesthesia. Uh, this is the disclaimer. What is the routine spinal anesthesia? What we give routinely is mostly for abdominal and below umbilical surgeries. The hyperbaric bupivacaine, 2, 3 ml, 0.5% heavy. Uh, it's gravity dependent. So you give head low, head eye, and adjust according to the requirements of the surgery. Its advantages of uh, spinal is it's reliable, relatively cheap, predictable, easy, intense block. It has superior muscle relaxation, less bleeding, reduced risk, recovery is faster. In short, it fits into the ARS protocol of early discharge from ICU and the hospital. What are the disadvantages? Hypotension. There can be severe fall in the BP. There can be bradycardia if the cardiac fibers are involved. There can be PDPH, which can be troublesome. The urinary retention does not allow the patient to go uh, discharge on the same day. Cardiorespiratory morbidities can cause a lot of uh, problems and uh, cardiovascular collapse. Neural injury can occur. There is chances of uh, deep vein thrombosis and tremors. All these are against the ERAS protocol again. Now, can our spinal anesthesia be tamed? Yes, if we can avoid the gravity dependency, if we can avoid hemodynamic fluctuations, that is the need for extra fluid, preloading, co-loading, it can be avoided. If we can achieve higher and targeted levels without any hemodynamic compromise, if we allow early mobilization, that is, it can be as a daycare surgeries. And if it allows early voiding or and uh, voiding of urine and discharge from the unit. What are the factors affecting the spinal block? More than 20 factors are there, which includes the patient characteristics, the injection technique, the characteristics of the spinal fluid and the characteristics of the local anesthetic agent used itself. Among this, the controllable factors include the dose, that is the volume and the concentration of the LA solution, the site of injection or into the subarachnoid space or the level which we en enter with the spinal needle, the paricity of the LA solution, uh, and the, finally, the posture of the patient. The uncontrollable factors include the volume of the CSF present in that particular patient and the density of the CSF. Now, the spread of the LA in the CSF is influenced initially by the bulk displacement injection current used the gravity or the baricity of the LA solution and later on by the diffusion of the LA solution through the CSF into the central neurexial system and the curves of the vertebral canal also influences the movement of the drug uh, along the CSF. Now, what are the CSF features? CSF at 37 degrees centigrade has a specific gravity of 1.003 to 1.008. The baricity of the LA, when we describe, is it with respect to the CSF? And the hyperbaric is it's less denser than the CSF. Hyperbaric solution is more denser, and isobaric is equal to the CSF. This diagram of gravities influences the baricity. For the isobaric solution, it remains where it is being injected or it may spread along with the CSF diffusion two or three segments above and below the site of injection. The hyperbaric, because of the density, it settles because of the gravity and settles to the lower segments. Hypobaric, because it is lesser dense than the CSF, goes above the site of injection. Now, what is the volume? Low volume uh, it means decreased spread. It means spread. The massive drug, like suppose if you give an epidural, it goes into spinal, you get total spinal because of the higher volume being used. There. And it has no straight line relationship. Temperature, decreased storage temperature increases the baricity. Okay, so bupivacaine at 24 degrees, it's slightly hyperbaric, then the same BP vacane at 37 degrees centigrade is slightly hyperbaric. G viscosity. Viscosity is decided by the glucose present in the LA solution. 
are routinely available uh, uh, hyperbaric or heavy uh, uh, bupivacaine solution contains 0.8% or 80 milligram per ml. Okay, but for the uh, LA solution to be viscous, only 8 milligram is enough. So uh, you have to keep this in mind. The increased viscosity means in significant greater mean spread. Now patient position, the degree of kefalad or caudal spread depends on the density and the patient position. For an isobaric solution, the position has no influence. Intrathecal LA stops spreading after 20 to 25 minutes with position change. After two hours, it becomes independent of any baricity. The bulk movement of CSF still containing LA solution keeps on spreading irrespectively. The level of injection, higher the level is increased uh, kefalad spread, but the hyperbaric uh, solution still, if you go higher, some drug goes down because of the gravity, the fluid currents. Barbotage effect can increase uh, the spread. Coughing can increase the spread. If you have a concomitant uterine in contraction, you expect a higher uh, spread of the drug. And you can use an epidural injection simultaneously to increase the CSF spread of the intrathecal drug by creating more positive pressure or the current increase in the CSF. Now, a local anesthetic agent in the uh, intrathecal along with additives gives you a dual effect. It decreases the density and uh, makes it more hypobaric sometimes, and it increases the mean spread and it delay in regression. So it can have a, a lesser potency, but the mean spread is more and the duration of action is more. There are many spinal additives. I will not go into this now, but for now, the opioids like morphine, fentanyl, buprenorphine, and clonidine are the only ones which are FDA approved, though we use dextomid, and we have known people using medazolam, ketamine, also intrathecally. Now, coming to our hot favorite topic, that is the thoracic segmental spinal. After knowing the characteristics of the spinal spread of LA drug, the spinal uh, controllable factors of the uh, spinal anesthesia, we come to thoracic spinal or segmental spinal. What do you mean by segmental spinal? It means blocking of only the required dermatomes essential for the proposed surgery with low effective LA drug dose. This needs the dural puncture at higher levels, that is maybe at the thoracic level also, and very low dose of the local anesthetic injected into the spinal space. Now, there are many articles, uh, whether thoracic spinal you can do or not do, and there have been many publications, uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, breast cancer surgeries, abdominal cancer surgeries, orthopedic surgeries have been done. There are uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy and a segmental thoracic spinal or uh, uh, cancer surgeries under abdominal cancer surgeries also. Our, there are many FP uh, uh, post showing few spine chilling cases by Dr. Starnari and team on Facebook. They gave higher level of spinal in continuous form or a single dose with or without an epidural uh, combination in patients with multiple comorbidities like severe obesity, the uh, chronic uh, renal diseases, cardiomegaly, anemia, uh, my myocardial infarctions with low ejection fractions, and they have successfully conducted surgeries uh, of, uh, see, diaphragmatic uh, reconstruction, diaphragmatic hernia with the reconstruction, they've given spinal at P9, and uh, they, the, these shows with patients with aortic valvular stenosis and atrial fibrillation for left hemicolectomy, they have given spinal, that is continuous spinal with at T10 level, then they have done a catheter placement uh, and giving spinal sedation also in the form of ketamine, 20 milligram and midazolam and dextromid combination, okay? Uh, they have successfully conducted this and are continuous intrathecal analgesia also postoperatively. 
okay our own uh, stalwart dr naresh paliwal has posted so many and he has publications also showing uh, uh, thoracic sp segmental spinal and conducting successfully breast cancer surgeries and intra abdominal surgeries and many other uh, surgeries with comorbidities okay now uh, what is the uh, main worry of thoracic spinal is the in according to the textbook or the medical school teaching it was the risk of neural injury the spinal cord the nerve roots the respiratory distress caused by the uh, paralysis of the thoracic muscles and cephalic spread leading to complete cardiovascular shutdown or collapse in case of total or high spinal okay but in the above picture the myelographic studies show that the thoracic cord lies quite anteriorly okay the thoracic uh, cord lies quite anteriorly whereas the in uh, the lumbar cord you can see that it is lying more dorsally okay in the within the theca the space between the dura mater see this has been calculated and the space between the dura mater and the mid to the lower thoracic spinal cord okay is wider than the space you can see the t9 and below the space in the lumbar region is narrower than the that in the spine uh, thoracic spine because of the lumbar enlargement also the csf at thoracic levels you can see this is the from the posterior okay and the csf at the uh, thoracic level is decreased compared to the lumbar levels the thoracic nerves are thinner thus even a less anesthetic drug okay dilute can ca it causes the less anesthetic drug dilution and the roots are very easily blocked due to small size needing low volume local anesthetic agent in the thoracic level the continuous spinal that is the continuous graded or segmental spinal can be done it is planned or after accidental dural puncture during epidural you can convert an epidural into a continuous spinal no harm in doing that it's rapid in action and more pronounced block there are few hemodynamic changes and it can be controlled the level can be controlled by graded doses or through the catheter micro catheter is to be used that is 27 gauge and smaller but it's not available in india therefore we use the smallest available uh, catheter of uh, epidural catheter that is the 19 gauge drugs you can use either isobaric or hyperbaric but keeping in mind that the new repeated use can cause neurotoxicity and infection okay you can start the bolus 1.2 ट्वेंटीट post dural spinal headache now my experience with aspect uh, spinal anesthesia is in six uh, surgeries like endovenous laser therapy uh, ventral hernias either lap or open in vanal hernias either lap or open lap hysterectomies gall bladder removals intestinal resections in uh, percutaneous nephrolithotomies fracture femur fixations the cesarean sections debridement and plastic surgeries of all the lower limbs and vaginal hysterectomies and here i have studied the in uh, isobaric or hyperbaric in and uh, com compared isobaric uh, to hyperbaric levobupicane and ropipicane block uh, time 44 sensory block the peak sensory block un3 and uh, compared it to the time of incision the two segment regression time 
and the regression to the modified bromate to voiding of urine postoperatively, ambulation, and the IV fluids required. Uh, here, it showed that the IV fluid required is very minimal, around 300 to 500 compared to the hyperbaric, which requires almost one to one is earlier in isobaric compared to the hyperbaric and ambulation is earlier to compared to the hyperbaric and the regression score is also uh, i mean uh, the time uh, is there more in the isobaric compared to the hyperbaric so and the time to incision which is uh, more concerned is just about equal to the hyperbaric okay the intraoperative parameters, the uh, blood pressure, the pulse, uh, after administration of isobaric and uh, levobupivacaine and ropivacaine, there almost you know, the uh, BP and the pulse were maintained throughout up to three hours or the time to regression. And few cases which I have done, I'll explain. Uh, this was a 58-year-old female patient with epigastric hernia who had a CABG done three years ago with low ejection fraction of 30%. And anti she was an anticoagulant, which was stopped. Her This is a 2D echo, which shows severe LV dysfunction and a L, 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 low, uh, left ventricle ejection fraction of around 30%. There was regional wall motion abnormality also. And we gave, I gave a isobaric, uh, you can see the 2 cc of 0.5, uh, 75% ropivacaine being injected, at which I thought was T9, uh, T8, T9 level. And we started with epigastric hernia, but in between the patient complained of pain because I judged because of the spinal curvature, I judged the level as wrong. I actually, I should have gone here for T7. So my dermatome selection here was wrong. You know, the correlation between the spinal injection and the dermatomes, which was uh, uh, required, was wrong. So I had to supplement it with segmental block. Here, my indication is you have to select the uh, injection level properly according to the dermatomes which the surgery is involving. Post, this was a post-operative picture. Now, coming to the case two. This was a 40-year-old patient of IVF pregnancy, 36 weeks were completed. She had left-sided pneumonia, Krebs, cough, decreased air entry on treatment for her respiratory symptoms on antibiotics and steroids. She developed herpes zoster and severe pain in the left leg. Her incentive spirometry was limited to 400 ml only. The obstetrician consultant wanted the, to deliver the baby as soon as possible. Here, this was the X-ray picture, and this was a herpes zoster at the back. So I had to go above the herpes zoster level because of knowing the uh, implications and how I can manage with thoracic spinal. I used hyperbaric solution at a higher level, that is at T78 for this patient, and successfully conducted the uh, uh, cesarean section with just 1.2 ml of hyperbaric 0.5% bupivacaine. Now, 62-year-old female patient for laparoscopic cholecystectomy had severe COPD with restrictive PF pulmonary function test. This was her X-ray chest. Here, the laparoscopic cholecystectomy was done under uh, thoracic segmental spinal anesthesia at T910. Okay. 2 ml of levobupivacaine, 0.5% was given, and sedation was given in the form of fentanyl 50 mics and midazolam 2 milligrams only. This was the spine of that patient where we entered the uh, spine using a 26 gauge spinal needle at around T8, T9 level. Okay. Now, coming to a percutaneous nephrodotomy position, a procedure. This uh, one patient had a 65 year old female, had staghorn calculus, she had diabetes mellitus, COPD, IHD with an ejection fraction of 25%. Now, my concern was I have to give a level extending from uh, for the patient, uh, surgeon to remove the staghorn calculus. At the same time, uh, you have to keep in mind that isobaric solution is sacral sparing. So now what can I do? Okay, uh, this was the x-ray of the patient. I had to avoid GA. So 
I gave a spinal at T9 level, uh, but my plan was I have to block the sacral segments also. Therefore, I gave around 0.5 to 0.8 ml of hyperbaric 0.5% uh, bupivacaine, waited for some time till it settled down, and then around 30 seconds to one minute, and then I injected 1.5 ml of uh, uh, isobaric ropivacaine that is 0.75% to get the uh, uh, PCNL done. Okay. Now coming to the case 5, 69 year old male patient fracture femur, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, IHD, chronic uh, kidney disease with an ejection fraction of 20% for, had a, a PTCA and was on anticoagulants, dialysis an alternate day, old history of pulmonary cox with fibrosis, this patient had, this was his x-ray. This patient was successfully done with 0.5% uh, uh, levobupivacaine at uh, L12 space, spinal space. And uh, along with that, an FICB block of 25 ml of 0.2% ropivacaine was given. And the uh, surgery, the rock steady parameters with just minimal 300 ml of IV fluids was needed. This was a 59-year-old male patient for MRM, uh, huge fungating mass, lots of pulmonary metastasis, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, IHD, post-CABG. The ejection fraction was just 25%. This is the huge fungating mass. You can see the patient was for palliative mastectomy surgery. This is the uh, lung metastasis, which is seen. Okay. The surgery was successfully done under thoracic spinal anesthesia at uh, the spinal level was T5, T6, just 1.2 ml of 0.75% ropivacaine was given successfully with no, uh, not much IV fluid required around 200 to 300 ml of uh, uh, ringer lactate and absolutely no sedation was required for this patient. Now, coming to vaginal hysterectomy, uh, the patient had severe Parkinsonism. She was post-CABG uh, with an ejection fraction of 25%. Now, how can I give isobaric? Can I give or not? That was a question. But here, I used a combination of isobaric and hyperbaric, as I had previously mentioned, for uh, uh, PCNL surgery with 0.5% of uh, hyperbaric uh, bupivacaine was given. The patient was made to sit for some time and followed by uh, uh, 1.5 ml of uh, levobupivacaine at the same level, that is the L3-4 injection. Okay, And this case was conducted successfully with the patient requiring bare minimal 200 to 300 ml of IV fluids only. And excellent, excellent, uh, parameters intraoperatively. This is a 55-year-old listed for removal of DHS screw uh, and bipolar hemi or hip uh, uh, arthroplasty was planned. She had mild uh, MS when the DHS was done five years ago under epidural. Now, her 2D echo picture shows moderate mitral stenosis. This patient, I could not take a chance of, you no, know, she has global hypokinesia, mild re, mit, mitral regurgitation also along with it, a dilated LA and a moderately compromised LV systolic function. So I planned for a continuous spinal anesthesia, giving small aliquots of uh, uh, LA drug that is uh, in the form of levobupivacaine 1 ml as bolus followed by 0.5 ml in periodically, which she just required two doses of 0.5 ml and the surgery was done successfully. This is another similar severe cal cal calcific aortic stenosis with mild MR and M, uh, mild uh, AR also with an ejection fraction showing 60%, which, but I did this case under continuous spinal anesthesia. This patient was for a uh, TURBT, that is transurethral bladder tumor resection, where uh, the epidural may or may not function well. No? So how do we conclude? Can we, uh, to sum up, the comparison between the isobaric levobupivacaine 0.5% is equal to ropivacaine 0.75%. Both are pure levoisomers. 
both are less cardiotoxic and neurotoxic. The clinical profile is similar to the racemic bupivacaine, that is a routinely used hyperbaric uh, bupivacaine. In, in terms of potency, definitely the racemic bupivacaine is more than the levobupivacaine, which is in fact more than the ropivacaine. These are the ropi, uh, LA solutions available in the market. Intrathecal or the spinal use of racemic bupivacaine is similar to the levobupivacaine in clinical profile and potency. The ropivacaine has nearly half the potency, that is li less lipid solubility. Therefore, it, it gives less uh, motor blockade and uh, good sensory block. So it can be used for the surface anesthesia uh, uh, like uh, breast, hernias and all very well and the early mobilization uh, you get very early mobilization and early discharge advantages includes it has remarkable cardiovascular stability even with higher levels of blocks low dose is that block sensory more than the motor providing selective or segmental spinal especially when you go higher up in thoracic levels you need less uh, doses because of the less volume of csf uh, onset is gradual similar, you can compare it to the epidural. It preserves the muscle tone, power, and recovery of motor loss is quicker, hence useful for daycare surgeries. It has less sympathetic blockade, therefore the parameters are better maintained, and hence you get early bladder control, so it prevents the catheterization and once but what are the disadvantages? You have to keep in mind when using this is once administered, the level cannot be modified as in your hyperbaric by giving head low or head high. There is sacral sparing sometimes more so, especially in surgeries like vaginal hysterectomies and uh, perineal surgeries. So you have to be careful. Uh, unlike hyperbaric, it cannot be administered blindly. For any surgery, you have to know your dermatomes very well. What the surgeon is planning, you have to discuss with him till what extent the surgery goes along. And it gives less muscle relaxants with low dosage. So if the surgery needs more relaxation or the surgeon is uh, needs more relaxation, you have to keep this in mind. It is of shorter duration of action. So you may need to supplement a epidural catheter along with it so that you can have a, a catheter as a backup plan. The dermatomes have to be understood very well. This picture is very helpful. The level of volume and the injection should be based on the surgeries. These are the uh, site of injection you have to decide according to the uh, surgical procedures. Hence, I will not call it as a segmental spinal or an isobaric spinal. It is the targeted spinal. You have to understand the surgery, the dermatomes, the need of the surgery and the surgeon and give a targeted spinal anesthesia. And thank you, ISA Trishur. Uh, thank you.